Hi everyone, I'm Jay Fadden. Thank you so much for joining us today on This Is The Day. It is so good to be back. I was in Los Angeles. It sounds much better than it actually was <laughs> because of a room in a meeting. And Father, we have a wonderful show, some good friends with us. We do. Well, you know, we've begun the great season of opportunity, I call it, the 40 days of Lent. And you know, next month, March, is Mission Church Month here at Catholic TV. And so today we have a little preview with our guest, Father Philip Dabney of the Basilica of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, otherwise known as the Mission Church. Many of you will recognize his face immediately as the Redemptorist Priest who leads the weekly Novena to Our Lady in English and Spanish. And with Father Dabney, Stephen Kessinger, the creative genius behind that beautifully produced and prayerful Novena presentation. Also, Bonnie Engstrom and Rosemarie Rudolph, executive directors of Behold Conference in Peoria, Illinois, will be with us. And the Faith Out Loud segment features Katrina from St. John's in Hopkinton. Boy, that is a lot going on. It and is. Kevin, how are you doing today? He is... Well, you know where he's, Kevin is? He's getting coffee, I think. He, he's getting coffee. All right. Well, all that and much more right now on This Is The Day. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Jay Fadden. Thank you so much for joining us today on This Is Day. Hey, I have to tell you, you know what I'm thrilled about? What's that? Well, I'm, not, I'm thrilled about being here on the show and the wonderful guest fathers here, and we're going to have a lot of fun, but I'm thrilled that Kevin made it. He I, got his coffee, he and he's, he's now at the news desk. Literally, as, as we went to that break and uh -huh. we're rolling, Kevin walks through, as calm as can be, too. Just yeah. walks through. Got caught in a little traffic, so he wasn't at his news desk when I thought he was, mm -hmm. because I had come in a little later, actually, too. And also, uh, Katrina is from Rochester, New York. Izzy. I'm not Izzy. We've Izzy. got Izzy. Izzy. Yeah. You know, I know another Izzy. Do you know who Izzy is? Mark Starr. Oh, Mark Starr. I had dinner with her. Mark Quello, who is our chief yeah, engineer. Yeah, Izzy and TV. Judy, his fiance. So I, and and uh, Brad Garrett from Everyone Loves Raymond. Yeah. I had dinner with him. What a wonderful guy. Great dinner. Just a great time. Fantastic. And, and of course, it's Lent. And it is Lent, yeah. yeah. So I had to make sure that uh, it was the day before Lent. So I didn't go crazy. But Good. I have to tell you, though, I, uh, I fulfilled my Lenten obligations on Wednesday, even at an airport. Made sure I ate only the minimum and all that. I heard you, though. I watched you, you know, on uh, the iPad. Did you really? I did. And I heard the whole thing of that. I, I wish I was 60 at that point because then I could eat anything unless I wanted to follow it, right? Do you think people know that if they go to iCatholic.tv, they can watch uh, Catholic TV on their iPad? Now they do. I have to tell you, it looked awesome. It looked great. I was watching it with Mark Weller. And uh, good job. Good and job. Father, uh, Mark Murphy was in from, uh, uh, actually from uh, one um, of the great Milton, parishes yeah. of the Archdiocese right. in Milton, St. Agatha's. And he spoke about the, the three important things that we try to do during Lent, that is fasting mm. and almsgiving, and of course, prayer. And I say that last, but it probably should be first. It's a good segue because I put more letters into the prayer box today. Yeah, Amen. right over there. And it was what was great about it was as I was walking down the hall, Karen yells out of her office, hold it, hold it, I've got some more. Can you put these? And I, I, I just said to her, I said, are they wonderful letters? She said, they are. She said, they're beautiful letters they've asked me for in the prayer box. So great. there they are. So I know that I remember them every time I'm at Mass, and I know you do too. All those people. And while you were away, of course, uh, you, we, you, you, I'm sure you saw it. I, in fact, I know you did. Uh, the mm -hmm. consistory from Rome and yeah. uh, 22 new cardinals, among them two Americans and uh, one Canadian. And, uh, of course, tomorrow, Saturday, that is, if you're watching Catholic TV, uh, you can help welcome back Cardinal Timothy Dolan at 10.30 in the morning live prayer service from St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. And then 4 o'clock Mass, first Mass of the first Sunday of Lent from St. Patrick's as well. And this gives me an occasion to remind people that uh, every Saturday evening at 7 o'clock you can watch uh, Mass, the Vigil Mass for that Sunday from the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. It is absolutely beautiful. And we've done rosaries from down there. and We've done some specials with uh, Archbishop of Cardinal World. So we're very, very familiar with that. And one other thing we're very familiar with 
our uh, great letters. You have a long one to start I do, with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, this viewer writes, shortly after Christmas, I wanted to attend daily mass, but could not find one in my area compatible with my work schedule. So I searched online, I'm surprised, to find out such a niche is filled right here in Massachusetts, and that station has existed since the 1950s. Since then, I've become more familiar with some of your other shows. In particular, I enjoy music, history, and travel shows. Hearing the faith-filled, upbeat, and hopeful message in a world that is often the opposite provides a wonderful alternative to mainstream entertainment. And that station is, of course, the Catholic TV Network. <laughs> there was a woman in today who went to the Mass you were talking about earlier, and she came up to me and said, I remember you when you were much younger and single. Ooh. So now I'm married and old. So I I've so. Yeah. This is a good letter. It is such comfort to be able to say the rosary with Father Reed and attend Mass daily. I'm so grateful for these moments to be able to embrace God's love and encouragement each day. Thank you very much, and thank you. Thank you for that letter, uh, the Rosary and the Mass, the Mass, the foundation of Catholic TV, so glad you enjoy it. Another viewer writes, thank you for Catholic TV. The Mass starts my day, speaking of the Mass, and I feel blessed. I'm homebound, but I don't feel alone because I have Catholic TV. And I can't tell you how many times we hear that uh, in the mail and email from people who rely upon Catholic TV, uh, not just for the Mass, but for our full 24 hours of programming each and every day. It, it really is a companion in a very real way to many people and keeps them, so many of us, connected to the church. So thanks for writing and letting us know. No, it really is. And I was walking down the street with Bonnie just a, a little while ago before the show, and Alan stopped me at several policy, and he was talking all about Catholic TV. He told me to tell you that you're doing a great job and, oh, and loves it. And he told me about the other people who are at this center who watch Catholic TV. So that's, that's nice. always a nice thing to hear. I would like to compliment you, Father Reed, on your direction of Catholic TV Network, of the Catholic TV Network. A day never goes by where we don't spend hours enjoying your programs, and I hope you're enjoying those programs right now. And we always love to get your emails and your letters, and it's a real easy thing to do. All you have to do is write us here at Catholic TV, 34 Chestnut Street, Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471, or email us at thisisaday at catholictv.com. And one of the things that we love here at Catholic TV is Faith Out Loud. We faith Out Loud. We like when people talk about their faith, and Izzy's about to do that right now. My name is Izzy, and I'm from the Diocese of Rochester. I, my part of my, my favorite part of my, my faith is that I originated our praise band called Reverend Sound. At our praise band, we play Catholic rock music, which brings the church to life. I'm Izzy, and that is my faith out loud. And we are back, and joining us now is Bonnie Enstrom, Associate Director of Behold Conference, and Rose Marie Rudolph, Executive Director of the Behold Conference in Illinois. Guys, thanks so much for being with us today. How are you? We're good. Great. Thank you. How's the weather out there? Um, it's a little cold. We had a little dusting of snow overnight. It's actually beautiful. Snow? I, what's snow? I, I have to ask that, you know, because my, my dad watches this show and he always, he's like the weatherman. He likes to know what's going on around the country. So I have to make sure I ask you that. Oh. <laughs> Rosemary, tell us about the upcoming Behold Conference. Well, the upcoming Behold Conference is a spirit, it's like a spiritual spa day for women. We have mass, confession, adoration, benediction, incredible talks, a musical concert, and lots of coffee and chocolate. And uh, <laughs> it's been uh, just an amazing thing to be involved with, truly incredible. Um, it started with an off-the-cuff comment at a parish mentorship group um, uh, for newly married women. And um, six weeks later, we were listening, 100 women were listening to Mother Assumpta Long and Teresa Tamio in our school gymnasium. And then um, the, the next year, we had uh, 400 women. And um, this is our third year. And thanks to the support of our pastor, we are uh, expecting um, over 600 women. And um, this year, um, our theme is from the heart of God, which is a phrase, of course, taken from John Paul II's encyclical Moliere Signatatum, um, which refers to all women uh, coming forth from the heart of God. You know, when you think about it, you know, I, I kind of talk to the ladies, I say, well, you know, 
our Lord could have created us as, you know, kind of souls sort of just kind of going throughout the earth, but instead, you know, he gave us this physical presence, our bodies, and, and, and the whole conference 2012 specifically explored how can any woman at any stage and age and stage of life, how are we called to return that love to our Lord by that physical, using that physical presence? For instance, it's, you know, for a teenager, it's living purity, serving the poor. Um, in, in, you know, for a woman in her childbearing years, it's uh, your, your body then becomes an instrument to love your husband, to bring you life into the world, to perform the spiritual and corporal works of mercy. Um, perhaps if you're called to religious vocation, uh, this physical presence might be used in a variety of, uh, a whole variety of different ways. And we love to have the religious sisters there. We let them in for free. Um, <laughs> and, um, and, and then maybe in later seasons of life, you, you know, your role might be a little bit more along the lines of redemptive suffering. Um, and all of the conferences are dedicated to um, Archbishop Sheen. And then this year, um, our conference is uh, dedicated, uh, we like to highlight one particular saint every year, and this year our conference is dedicated to um, St. Gianna Mola. I have to ask you, you know, the, these are important gatherings, and, and I don't, one of you can answer this, uh, either Bonnie or Rosemary. You've invited bloggers to the conference, and why is the use of social media so important to you? That is a great question. Um, I think... You know, these gatherings are really important, first of all, because we're trying to do something with Behold that the culture doesn't do. We are trying to honor the dignity of every woman, and we're trying to celebrate their vocation, no matter what that vocation is, no matter where they are in that vocation. And um, Jennifer Fulweiler, who was actually our key you know, keynote speaker last year, she has this great analogy where... Um, there used to be, as a part of every culture, a gathering well, where the women would go and draw water every day, and they would have a form of community and camaraderie. But we don't have that anymore. And the Internet has kind of become that well for us. So through Twitter or Facebook or blogs, that's how women get together now and, and share our faith and share our, um, our joys and our burdens and really have that community. Um, and one of the things we're trying to do with the Behold Conference is make that one-day conference the well <laughs> so we can bring these these bloggers and these women who maybe know nothing about new media but we can bring them bring all of us together and and form that community where we can praise and honor god well so. we're very excited at catholic tv to be exhibiting at the behold conference this year can't wait to get there where can me where can people learn more about it at uh, beholdconference.com we're also on uh, facebook and twitter well, Rosemary and Bonnie, thanks so much for being with us, for the great work you're doing. Sounds like a great time. Well, thank, thank you. And, uh, thank you. And we'll be able to say hi when we're down there uh, to see you guys. Yeah, oh, awesome. what a joy. Plenty of coffee and chocolate for everyone. <laughs> coffee and chocolate. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. God, God bless. Bye-bye. Kevin, so how you doing? Good, Jay. How Did, about yourself? You don't know what happened <clears> at the beginning of the show, do you? I didn't, no. Yeah, so what happens is uh, I'm getting ready, and they said, oh, yeah, Kevin's here. So I had stepped out, so I thought you were over there. So I said, so what's going on, Kevin? And it was quiet. Silence. Just total silence. Which is very <laughs> unlike Kevin. Yeah, <laughs> there was nothing. So Father and I are standing here, and then I hear, Kevin mm. actually isn't there. Mm. And then we go to the, uh, you know, the little intro there, and you walk right past us. Wow. So hit a little traffic today, huh? I did, yeah. Yeah, you're pretty, pretty big accident. Unusual for school vacation week. It was going great all week long. It was great. <laughs> Pretty easy getting in. Until Friday, until the day of the program. Did you miss me on uh, Tuesday? I did, desperately, Jay. Great. That's <laughs> what I'd like to hear. Hey, what's going on around the world in the Catholic uh, faith? All right. Thanks, Jay and Father. Hello, everyone. It is time to take a look at the news. We begin from the Vatican. After a procession from Rome's Church of St. Anselm to the Church of Santa Savina, Pope Benedict XVI held his annual Ash Wednesday Mass. He said that receiving ashes at the beginning of Lent is a call to repentance and humility and a sign that believers know that death will not have the final word in their lives. The Pope received ashes on his head from retired Slovakian Cardinal Josef Tomko and the Cardinal Priest of Santa Savina. This year, the Pope rode between the two churches in a golf cart modified in a mini Pope mobile. At 84 years old, the Pope has been using a mobile platform to process, process that is, into St. Peter's Basilica since last October. Vatican spokesman Father Federico Lombardi said that the use of the platform was to help the Pope conserve his energy and that Pope Benedict had no serious health problems. 
Before receiving and distributing ashes, Pope Benedict gave a homily focused on the meaning of ashes and of the admonition from the book of Genesis, you are dust and to dust you shall return. The Pope said that in the Catholic liturgy, ashes are one of those material signs that bring the cosmos into the liturgy. He said ashes remind humans that God created them out of dust of the earth and breathed divine life into them. And the Pope said the tradition also references the sin of Adam and Eve when God cursed the ground and made it sprout thistles and thorns. In other news from the Vatican, during his weekly general audience, also held on Ash Wednesday, Pope Benedict XVI explained the importance behind the 40 days of Lent, as well as the significance of the devil's temptation of Jesus. Rome Reports now takes us to the Vatican for more on the audience. Since Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of Lent, the Pope talked about the significance of this 40-day period. During the general audience, the Pope began by explaining why it lasts exactly 40 days. In the Bible, the number 40 is rich in symbolism. It recalls Israel's journey in the desert, a time of expectation, purification, and closeness to the Lord, but also a time of temptation and testing. The Pope then talked about the time when Jesus was tempted by the devil. He says this encounter helped people face challenges with courage and patience while trusting God. In these 40 days, may we draw nearer to the Lord by meditating on his word and example and conquer the desert of our spiritual aridity, selfishness, and materialism. More than 6,000 pilgrims were gathered at the Vatican's Paul VI Hall. Among them was a group of about 100 people from England and Wales. The group of former Anglicans was among the first to join the Catholic Church under the so-called Personal Ordinariate of Our Lady of Walsingham, established back in 2011. Looking now at news from around the country, opening a University of Notre Dame symposium, Capuchin Father Reniero Cantalamessa, preacher to the papal household, said that priestly celibacy must be seen as a freely accepted commitment and a gift of grace, not just a functional discipline. Two archbishops and several scholars also spoke at the event about the biblical and theological roots of celibacy and how a richer understanding of celibacy results in happier priests who are better able to shepherd the people. Archbishop Alan Vigneron of Detroit said people need to be educated about the worth of priestly celibacy. He said Jesus gave his virginal self to the church, so celibate priests share this identification with Christ and serve as heralds of the new evangelization. Father Carter Griffin, Vice Rector of Blessed John Paul II Seminary and Director of Vocations for the Archdiocese of Washington, spoke on the fatherhood of the celibate priest, saying the virginal Jesus acts as a father in providing physical and spiritual food, teaching, healing, protecting, and generating children for the kingdom of heaven. Thus, he said, the celibate priest is configured to Christ and is a sanctifier, teacher, and a shepherd. Monsignor Stephen Rossetti, a psychologist who has studied the priesthood, closed the symposium saying that a solid majority of priests embrace celibacy as a benefit to the priesthood. The symposium was sponsored by Notre Dame's Institute for Church Life and the Committee on Doctrine of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops with the assistance from the Lilly Endowment. And finally in the news, retired Bishop Robert Banks of Green Bay, Wisconsin, is recuperating at home after undergoing a heart operation at St. Vincent's Hospital. According to a statement issued by the diocese, he was hospitalized after suffering a heart attack February 19th and had surgery to receive two stents. Bishop Banks, who turns 84 on Sunday, was named the Bishop of Green Bay in 1990 and retired as head of the diocese in 2003. Since his retirement, he has kept a full schedule of liturgical events, including leading a group of 42 pilgrims to Rome last May. The statement went on to say that Bishop David Ricken, who is the current head of the diocese, Auxiliary Bishop Robert Murnau, diocesan staff, and Bishop Banks' friends and family are continuing to offer prayers for the bishop's speedy and full recovery. Bishop Banks, uh, a native of East Boston, was ordained for the Boston Archdiocese in 1952, studied at the Gregorian University and Lateran University in Rome. He was a former professor and then rector at St. John's Seminary in Boston. He also served as Auxiliary Bishop in Boston before heading to Green Bay. Well, that is all the news we have for you on this Friday, February 24th, 2012. Let's send it back over to Father and Jay with more of This is the Day. Kevin, thank you very much. And our devotion to Our Lady in Boston can be traced to the very first evening service sermon preached in the original Redemptorist Church in 1871. It's affectionately called the Mission Church. And Father Dabney is here and 
Stephen Kessinger is here. Guys, thanks so much for being with us. It's Absolutely. a pleasure. Very much a, I said, Father, you know, boy, you're just becoming common here. You're, you did the Mass for us recently. Now you're here. We did a rosary over at the Mission Church. We're doing a uh, Catholic Destinations at the Mission Church because we love the Mission Church. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. Tell us a, a little bit about the uh, great history of the Mission Church right here in Boston. Well, the Redemptorists, uh, they first came to Boston in the 18, late 1860s, 1869, to give a mission. Mm -hmm. And they were uh, so successful that the bishop asked them to come and actually establish a foundation. So they purchased a piece of property in the 1870s. And within 10 years, they built the Basilica of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, um, so the Redemptorists, predominantly, many of the men in the house that came were missionaries. They were living in the rectory and they went out to preach missions all over the United States and into Canada. And so as a result, um, they established the name as being missionaries and eventually it was called the Mission Church and they changed the name of the hill, which was Parker Hill, to Mission Hill. <laughs> so, uh, and they were so successful in not only um, the devotion to Our Lady, but to attending to the needs of the people in that area, which were predominantly by that point in the 1900s was Irish. Mm -hmm. And uh, Father Dabney, you've become the face here on Catholic TV of the Novena. Before you, Father Adamek, Father, Father Manton, of course, whom many of our viewers know and love. Uh, and the devotion is, is really all about Our Lady and this particular icon. And Stephen, we're going to talk to you later about the beautiful job that you do on that Novena, and we're grateful for that. But could we talk about the, the icon, and could you just explain it to us, because that icon has been the source of great comfort and healing and consolation for so many. Yes, it's a... Uh it's an icon that comes from the island of Crete. Mm. And so what makes it a little bit different from icons that you would see from the Byzantine world or the Russian icons is it has a little bit more body in the face. Uh, so it has Italian influence. But it follows all the rules of iconography. Uh, the colors uh, speak about the picture. And the store, there's a story in the picture. And the story is that the child Jesus had a dream, and that dream is indicated by the two angels that are on either side of Mary's shoulder. And they are showing to the child Jesus how he's going to die. And so, like any child who has a frightening dream, he runs to his mother and he jumps into her arms. And that's depicted by the artist um, having the sandal, which is hanging at the bottom of his foot. And uh, he's coming to her for comfort. The, the picture is also, besides the story, the picture has tremendous um, symbolism. The colors, everything about the colors. The child Jesus is wearing a green robe, which is the symbol of hope. Jesus is our hope. And Our Lady is wearing a beautiful blue, which isn't usually the powdery blue that you might associate with Our Lady of Lourdes. And that's because it's to add to the contrast of the tunic the red tunic and the only person in the Byzantine Empire to wear red would have been the Empress. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so what the artist is saying is this is the Empress of the world. And a little boy today who looked at the picture when I pointed out the green said, yes, and she has it too. So she has a little bit of green right under her mantle, which is an indication of her role as our hope too. Mm -hmm. Wow, it is absolutely gorgeous. And another thing that's gorgeous is the program, the Mission Church Novena. And I know, Stephen, that you have a lot to do with that. You've done a great job. We're talking a little bit beforehand. Yes. It, it looks beautiful. Tell us, I love behind the scenes. <laughs> so tell me, tell me a little bit of what it took to do this and, and what goes into making it, because you do a great job. Oh, thank you very much. And, and I have to give some credit here as well. Uh, we went on the air in 1984, so we've been on TV for over 25 years. And uh, it's really uh, through um, William and Ann Corley, yeah, um, who, who, who put so much effort into getting it on TV, and Father Henry Kane to, to, to have this going. And, and Ann just retired a few years ago. Over 20 years she put uh, into this program, and, and I have to give her credit. Um, but when I took over the program about five years ago, you know, we wanted to make it intimate. We mm -hmm. wanted, uh, for folks at home, we wanted to reach out to people who you know might not be able to make it to the novena service each week so we moved it uh, from we would tape it in the church and we decided to move it over um, into the rectory chapel the redemptorist rectory chapel which is a beautiful space i know father reed has been able to to see it in a recent visit um, and, and it's a very warm space so it, it adds so much um, 
uh, warmth to it, and uh, really it creates an intimacy, I think, with the viewing audience. Um, it, it's, it's a challenge as well. Um, obviously, <laughs> it's a small yeah. space. It's not a huge space. Um, and lighting it and setting up cameras, it really wasn't built for that. Um, so we, we were able to, to, uh, to come up with, so with some solutions that I think really uh, uh, created uh, some nice images. And it so works. You know, the yes. Novena can be seen not only on Catholic TV at CatholicTV.com, but also on YouTube. You have a YouTube channel, too. Correct. Is that correct? Yeah, Mission Church Boston is our YouTube channel. And uh, we just started that uh, about two years ago along with our Facebook page, and it's really grown. We've had over 10,000 views, and it's, it continues to grow. And, and uh, not only do we have it in English, uh, Father John Lavin does our Spanish novena mm -hmm. also on Catholic TV, and that's also available uh, on YouTube as well. So it, it's, it's a great mix to, uh, to really reach out. Um, to several different audiences. Great. Well, it's been a great partnership over the year. You know, when you bring up Bill and Ann, yes. uh, I, I knew them both, uh, and uh, obviously I still know Ann, but, but they did such great work and so devoted. Do you find that, Father? We only have a minute or two, but do you find the people are very devoted to the Mission Church? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I was saying to Stephen on the way over, you know, every day you come, you encounter people who come from the hospital, mm -hmm. um, finding out about the Mission Church, and just visiting the icon of Our Lady. Uh, last, last week, a woman came up to me who um, had prayed for months, uh, over a year for a job, and had promised Our Lady that if she got a job, that she would give her first week's pay. And she handed me a check for $490 because it was her first week's pay. And um, I mean, she was giving up her, after months of not having a job, here she was in gratitude giving something to Our Lady. So the devotion is beautiful. Yeah, well, that's faith. That's I know, faith. and the we find that um, yeah, th it's just full of surprises. Yeah. You just never know, you know, who's going to stop in and talk to us. And well, I have to tell you, my grandmother and mother, my mother's watching this now. Every Wednesday, they'd be at the Mission Church when it used to it used to be date night. Would be everyone. <laughs> that's go to right. Mission. Oh, yeah. They yeah. always they always right. talk yeah. about date night. Date night. And, and did you know that that March is Mission Church Month here at Catholic yeah, TV? Yeah, we're very excited. And a little preview of the March magazine. Here it is. It's all about the Mission Church and the wonderful work that goes on there, and of course the novena to Our Lady, Mother of Perpetual Help, right here on the Catholic TV network. All kinds of information, Lenten programming, and more available in the Catholic TV Monthly, coming to your mailbox soon, and also available on your iPad or iPhone in newsstand, and there it is. And you actually, there was a picture of you. I saw a picture of you in there. <laughs> so <laughs> there you are again. <laughs> You're getting all kinds of press with us. Well, thank you, Stephen. Father, thank you so much for being with us today. Very much appreciated. And know that all of you are in our thoughts and prayers. And we ask God's special blessing upon you, particularly through the intercession of Our Lady, Mother of Perpetual Help, that the good Lord might gather you into his arms and deepen that friendship with you over these 40 days of Lent. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Thank you so much for joining us here in the Catholic TV living room. We love coming into yours. Until next time, everyone, God bless and have a great weekend.